Somewhere in this mess, I've got a short circuit. I want you to see how, using a special tool, we can track down the problem. We'll be quick, we'll be accurate. Now, in a recent video, we learned that for test purposes, it's smart to use a light bulb as a substitute for a fuse in a circuit that's repeatedly blowing fuses. The bulb's resistance prevents damage and gives us a chance to look for the short while it's actually shorting. Now, before I show you that, two quick tidbits. Number one, if you have to turn the key on in the car, turn the ignition switch on for the circuit that's giving us trouble to be live or to be able to be tested, what you need to do is go to your coil and remove the small wires from your coil. Just take them off and bend them out of the way so they're not in harm's way. Okay, also, we need to understand that when electricity is running through a wire, it creates electromagnetic activity in that same wire. We are going to capitalize on that. Now, imagine we have a short somewhere in the wires between the fuse and my tail lights out there someplace. I've installed a bulb instead of the fuse. The bulb is going to limit the current flow to a safe level. No burned wires. So I'm going to turn on that and I'm going to give it a cover here so it doesn't get too bright in the camera. Okay, now, I have electromagnetic activity going through the wire, going to the light, coming out and heading off to the fuse someplace. Okay, can I track that? Can I track it all the way to the short and identify it? Yes. This meter is called a clamp meter. As the name implies, it has a clamp on it. When it's clamped around a wire that has current flow, the meter can detect it. This is the power coming out of our power supply. And I'll clip it on there. And she's coming in at a tad less than 2 amps. Okay. How about, that's what goes to the bulb. What comes out of the bulb? I'm going to do it again. Okay, we're coming in the same, a tad less than 2 amps. In fact, the electric current flowing through will be the exact same from the very beginning all the way to the short. It will not change. Okay, now can we use this? Of course we can. Okay, we're following this little red wire. Let's go down here. I've still got my 2, just a tad less than 2 amps. She's coming up now. The meter's coming up there. Okay, and we're following it along, and all of a sudden, we run into a problem. The red wire disappears in the harness. What are we going to do? Every one of us at some point in our lives has gone after a harness with a razor blade looking inside to find a problem. The meter will do that for us. Here it comes. A tad less than two amps inside the harness. She actually did that for us. We can go to the other end of the same harness and pick it up again. There she is again. A tad less than two amps coming through. And while we're here, let's do something. Okay. We just found out that if we come to a harness or a bundle, we, we're okay. The meter can pick it up right in there. Even with the harness being wrapped, even with the other wires in there, it will read it anyway. That's fantastic. And something else. Imagine we, we have current, 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 and we say, well, that wire goes all the way to the other end of the engine bay. I'm just going to go over there and see if I've got current there. So I go to the other end of the harness, and if I do, and there's no current there, remember the current is going to flow all the way to the ground, to the short, so it goes in the harness and doesn't come out. The short's inside. How are we going to find it? Think of a game of baseball. We've got the second baseman, the third baseman, and they've got a runner trap between the two of them. The second baseman tosses the ball to the third baseman, back to the second one, as they get closer and closer until they can tag the guy out. Well, if I've got current, no current, 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 right here, between the last place where I had current and I don't have current, that's the short. Probably if I look under this, I'm going to find out that it's chafed or rubbed or somehow touching ground, and that's the problem. It's easy. Also, Imagine that we get a tad less than 2 amps, 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 and all of a sudden we get a tad less than 3 amps, a tad less than 3 amps. What happened? Because we know the current remains the same through the circuit from all the way from the beginning all the way to the end, but it jumped a full amp over here. What's going on? Well, this is a harness. There are other wires. There are other circuits in here. We were all by ourselves, so we got here, and we came in contact with another wire with one amp running through it. The meter's reading both of them. So a tad less than two, a tad less than two, a tad less than two, jumps a full amp to a tad less than three. When I get to the wires at the end, one wire with the one amp is going to go in one way, and our wire with the tad less than two is going to go the other. And perhaps the nightmare of nightmares, we're following one red wire into the harness. So we figure, well, I'll just follow it to the other end. And here, what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five red wires. How in the world are we going to figure this out? Let the meter do it. Just pick up on the first one. That's certainly not a tad less than two amps. Let's pick another one. That's not a tad less than two amps. This one with the blue tape, this is it. I marked it. And when I do, 
there's our wire. We can identify this wire from all the way from the beginning all the way to the end because we know how much current is going through there. Something else we can do. We can take, for example, the same meter and we're wondering, does my alternator work? Is my generator work? How much current's coming out? Just clamp on the back. We don't have to take anything apart anymore. It's just that easy. Okay, now maybe you're saying, boy, that would be a terrific tool to borrow or even to own. If that's the case with you, there's one key feature you want to be aware of. These meters were originally designed to read AC, alternating current. That's what goes into your house, okay? But we're working on our car. The car has DC. We need a meter that can read DC, okay? And that's a bit of a challenge because most of them read AC just fine. DC is a step ahead. And what we need to do is we need to find a meter that will also read DC. It has to be in the specifications. The windfall is, while a meter that reads AC may not read DC, a meter that reads DC will almost always read AC with no problems at all. So let's review. We found out that we can use a live bulb instead of a fuse, and that would allow us to leave the circuit live while we're tracking it. We found out that the current is the same from one end of this circuit all the way to the other, so it would make it easy to identify our wire. We know that if the wire tries to hide inside a harness, that's okay, we can find it. We know if the problem is inside the harness, the same way the second and third basement can track down the runner, we can find the problem just that easy. We found out that if all of a sudden the current goes up, there's another circuit in there. That's okay. When we come to the end and we go off in different directions, it'll go one way, we go the other. And we found out that even if the colors are all the same, we can figure it out. So a clamp meter and a bit of electric knowledge will help us to find a short with ease.